Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my September Shop My Stash. I hope you guys are ready to see what products I'm pulling out for fall. We have lots of fun spooky palettes. Today I'm wearing the new Nomad Ghost Town palette. I did actually film this look, so if you're interested in seeing how I created this little halo eye today, I will go ahead and link my three looks using this palette in the description below and up in the cards. But let's go ahead and dive into my Shop My Stash. that time again it's time to go through my everyday makeup drawers this is where I keep all of my shop my stash panning projects products that I'm interested in trying out for any given season there's Bruce ignore my nail this is essentially where I pull all of my products from when I just am doing quick and everyday makeup looks I keep all my panning projects in here I keep products I'm interested in using at any given time new products to my collection things I'm trying out things I'm reviewing all of that is in here and it is just way too full as you can see I have things stacked literally everywhere so it's time to consolidate and condense this down I do this a few times a year just to keep my little everyday section cleared up but let's go ahead and start the first drawer I'm gonna consolidate is my palette. So right off to the side, I have my ABH Riviera. This was in my A to Z project pan. I hit my goals on this one, so it is ready to be filtered back into my main collection. So I'm gonna set that one to the side. Same with the Through My Eyes and ColourPop palette. I'm going to filter this one back into my main makeup drawers as well. I hit all my goals on those. I don't need them out at the moment. Okay, we have a lot of palettes in here. I'm trying to even see what's in here. I also have these that were up at the top, so let me include those over here. I know for a fact I'm ready to put back my Nomad Provence palette. I played with this one a lot through August, but I am not really feeling these bright tones at the moment anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that one back in my collection. Let's see what I have in here. Naked Cherry, this one, I can't remember why I had this one in here. I think I was really vibing with it over the summer, but I am not reaching for berry tones at the moment. It is fall. I am reaching for bronzy warm tones. So I'm gonna put this one back in my main drawers as well. Urban Decay Naked Metal Mania. I just got this one in PR maybe a couple weeks ago and I've only used it a couple times so far. I do wanna continue to play with it and I have been very impressed by the quality of this one actually. So this one is going to stay in the drawer for now until I finish reviewing it and finish kind of trying it out. So that one's going to stay. I'm going to put that off to the side. Same with my Naked Heat. This one is not new to my collection, but it is in one of my panning projects. So this one is also going to stay for sure. We have my Soft Glam ABH palette. This is my unofficial pan that palette for the year. I say unofficial because I've been pretty much using it as a pan that palette, but I haven't been doing official updates on it. The only updates you see are through my panning projects when I pan a shade. So that's staying. I think I'm ready to put back Sultry for right now. I will definitely be pulling this one back out in the winter time because that's the time of year I really like to use these cool tones. But I'm going to go ahead and put that one back for now. There are other cool tones that I can use in the meantime. This singles palette has a lot of my panels eyeshadows and A to Z project pan shades. So this will stay. I'm gonna set this off to the side though because I normally put it on top. Odin's Eye Sea Talk palette. This one is also in one of my panning projects. So this will be staying in. And this also has the cool tones that I crave from Sultry. So that can stay. As heartbreaking as it is, I think I can go ahead and put back my Planet Spirit palette. I say it's heartbreaking when my drawers are literally two feet from me. So like if I want to use it, I can pull it out. But this is just the drawers. I usually pull my makeup from these drawers because it's stuff I'm actively seeing. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back for now. ABH Nouveau palette. This one is so pretty for fall. I think I will leave this one in my drawer because I did wanna use this one a little bit more. Blend Bunny Lure. This one I think I can go ahead and put back for now. I played with this one a ton over the summer. As you can see, it's gotten a lot of love, especially up in those shimmers. But this one can go back into my main drawers for now. ColourPop Midnight Masquerade. This one is in a panning project, so I will be leaving this one in. My KVD Shade and Light Contour Palette. I don't know why I've been using this so much this year, but this one has been one of my go-tos. You can definitely tell it's been that shade. So I'm gonna leave this one in as well because I just have really liked playing with this one this year. And then I have a few indie palettes. This is the Lethal Velvet Dusk, I think. 
I don't have the names written on these. I'm pretty sure this one is called Velvet Dusk. This is a great fall palette. I did use it a couple times since putting it in my drawer, but I'm going to go ahead and clear some space out, put that one back. Same with Teresa is Lethal. I love this palette. This one actually just had its final restock, so if you're interested in picking it up, highly suggest. It is such a good palette, uh, but I think I'm going to put this one back for now. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that one back because there are still a few palettes, and I'm trying to get all the palettes off of my desk. Moonfall from Shroud Cosmetics. This one I want to keep in because I'm obsessed with these shimmers. Look how stunning these are. Obsessed. And this is such a cute little spooky palette too. Mockingbird Beauty. This is a new indie brand. I did receive this in PR and I did a review of this palette on my channel. I have really enjoyed it. I think the quality is really good. I love the grays. I love the blues. And I have been reaching for both Bird's Eye View and Innocence since I reviewed it. So I think I will leave this one in for another rotation and see how much more use I can get out of it before I filter it back into my drawers. We still have these. <laughs> and we have these. These are the bigger, bulkier palettes. And I don't think I need all of these on my desk at the same time. Hudson Valley from Nomad Cosmetics. This is one of my favorite fall palettes of all time. It is absolutely phenomenal. There is no way this is filtering out of my everyday makeup right now. So that's staying. Nomad Okavango, I think is how you pronounce it. Safari, another great one. I also received this one in PR. I'm going to go ahead and put this one back for now. The only reason I do really like to use this top row as like an everyday row, but the only reason I'm putting this back right now is because I know I'm going to want to focus on warm tone shades in a different palette at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one back. We have my Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson Conspiracy palette. This one is one that's currently in my A to Z project pan, the shade Ranch up in the corner. So this one's going to stay. I, I'm going to keep it off to the side though, just because it is so bulky, but that's like the only one I want to keep on the side. I have my Beauty Bay Dark Fantasy. This is also in a panning project. This will stay out. Cosmic Brushes Muse Palette. This one has been so fun to play with. I've loved playing with this palette, but I think I am going to put this one back in my main drawers for now, just because this type of color story isn't really what I gravitate towards in the fall. My Glam Light Rick and Morty Palette. Actually obsessed with this palette. First off, I love Rick and Morty, and I also really love this palette. It is so freaking fun. It is a lot bigger than what I normally would go for in a palette. The palette size is humongous, but I do really like all the colors in this one and I haven't had a single bad shade. So I, you know what, I think I'm actually going to put this one back just because it is so big um, and I do tend to reach for this one a lot. So I know exactly where it is. I can just reach for it when I want to use specific shades. This one is, I think the subversive palette from Pat McGrath, the mothership subversive. It doesn't tell me which one it is. I'm almost positive. This one is the subversive. This one is in my deck of panning project pan. Currently I'm doing a kind of no pan left behind style. I'm just trying to use up all the shades at least one or two times. So this one is staying because I have not completed that goal. My Jeffree Star Banana Palette. This one is also in my A to Z project pan. So this one shall also be staying in my drawer. And then we have the two Nomad Halloween palettes, the Haunted Europe literally one of my favorite palettes from Nomad. I love this one and I've loved reaching for it, especially in conjunction with the Ghost Town USA palette from Nomad. Oh my goodness. I just reviewed this one on my channel as well. This one was a gift in PR and it is literally so good. So I'm going to leave both of these in my drawers as well. So for palettes, that's pretty good. We condensed the palettes down quite a bit. We have lots and lots of cheek products tons and tons of cheek products. So we're just going to dive in. Up first, we have the Alice in Wonderland Sigma Blush Duo. I think it's actually a cheek duo. This is super pretty. It's cool tone. It's gorgeous. It has a blush. And then this one I think is supposed to be a highlighter, but I use it as a blush topper. I'm actually going to put this one back in my drawer as well because I've been reaching for my Sigma Cinderella cheek duo a lot more than I have the Alice in Wonderland one. I just feel like these peachy colors are a lot more up my alley this time of year. Ofra Glaze Donut. This is in collaboration with Nikki Tutorials. It is one of my all-time favorite highlights. 
I'm going to put this one back as well because <laughs> I have been reaching for the Ofra and Samantha March Start Inspired highlight a lot more. And like I said, I can always reach for any of these products that I put away back into my main collection, but these are just the products that I am either focusing on or just find myself gravitating towards naturally, just so I have them all in one close place. Benefit Cookie Highlight, this has been quite the favorite this past year. It is such a pretty shade. You can't even tell because of the box packaging, but love this. Super good. Keeping that in. ColourPop Flexitarian Highlight. I think... Um, you know what? I'm going to keep Flexitarian in. I'm going to put Cookie back because I feel like these two are very similar. So put Cookie back, keep Flexitarian in. This is the Super Shock blush in the shade Count Me In. I'm currently trying to finish this blush and we're getting there. I've repressed it and I've hit pan since repressing it. So I'm hoping that, I thought by the end of the year maybe I would have pan, but alas, that has not happened. So we'll see how long it takes me. I am determined to finish it though, so that's staying. We have the ABH bronzer. This is the shade Tawny. This is such a pretty bronzer. It's a little bit dark on me, but I love this for the summer. Um, I'm gonna put this one back as well because I feel like I am going to be reaching for other bronzers more. Same with my Fenty bronzer. This is in the shade Shady Biz. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back for now. Oh my gosh, I forgot this was in here. I was literally looking for this the other day. The Odin's Eye Solmon Warm Sun Blush. This one is super pretty. It's a peachy coral, but I feel like this peachy is very similar to the blush in the Cinderella Sigma one. So for now, I'm going to put this one back because if you pop over here, I do have Benefit Butterfly, which is this bright orange blush. And this is one of my favorite blushes to use this time of year. So I will keep Butterfly in. This is the Sephora Micro Smooth Powder in the shade Nude. This is a really, really nice powder. It's super blurring. It's super just everyday wear. It's super easy. But I am currently testing out the Your Skincare Translucent Powder. This I received in PR, and I have to say, this has been one of the best pressed powders I have ever tried. And that's not just because I was sent it. I'm saying that because it's genuinely one of the best pressed powders I've tried in a long time. And it's translucent, and I love it. So, Invisible Matte Finishing Powder. So, I'm going to keep this one in. I'm going to put the Sephora Micro Smooth back for now. I have this blush from ColourPop. This is the shade Flirt Alert, if I can open it, because these are so difficult. This one is not in any particular project, but as you can see, I have used quite a bit of it and I'm kind of curious to see how long it would take me to hit pan on a heart blush so I'm gonna keep that in oh my gosh I forgot about these so we have the Tarte Sculpt Tape Contour Stick mine is in the shade Soft Bronze and then we also have the ABH Contour Stick this one is in the shade Fawn I think I'm actually gonna put both of these back for now because I do want to pull out a different cream bronzer to work on and then I have my Too Faced Candy Cloud Cloud Crush Blush. Candy Cloud Cloud Crush Blush. That was a mouthful. This is one of those viral blushes, broke the internet. And for good reason, it is one of the best blushes I've ever tried. It looks so dang good. But because it's just not the tones that I'm really gravitating towards right now, we're going to put it back. I have two more products over here. We have my Fenty Cream Bronzer in the shade Butter Biscuit. This one is super nasty because it has dog hair in it because I have a cattle dog and that's what happens when you have a cattle dog. Hair gets into everything, but I've been trying to see how much of that I can use up by the end of the year, so I'll leave that in. Same with my Urban Decay Beach Bronzer. This one is in the shade Sunkissed. I feel like I am super close to hitting pan on this, so until I hit pan, this will also stay in. This giant pile is all of these smaller miscellaneous products that I keep on the top of my drawers. I have little eye products, brow products. 
Um, so let's just kind of jump through. We have some eyeliners, both my MAC eyeliners, the brush stroke eyeliners. I have brush stroke black and brown. Both of those are staying in. They are my absolutely all time favorite eyeliners. I'm going to put back both my Fenty and my Roller Lash from Benefit, and I'm going to leave out my KVD. So three liners staying, two going back in the drawers. I currently have three mascaras on top of my desk. We have my Benefit Bad Gal Bang Waterproof. This is my only waterproof option, so that will be staying. And then of these two, I think I'm going to try and use up my Jeffree Star Approved Mascara. So actually, I think the Perversion is older. So I think I'm gonna try and finish up the Perversion and then we'll work on the Jeffree Star Approved. I have this shadow stick from the ColourPop Alice in Wonderland collection. This one is super pretty, but again, it's just not that shade that I'm really reaching for right now. So this one can go back in the drawer. For brow products, I have my Benefit Microfilling Pen and my Urban Decay Brow Blade. These are both going to stay. And then I have two of the Brow Wiz pencils and they're both in the shade Taupe. For some reason, I thought I had two different shades, but they're both in the shade Taupe. So I'll leave one and I'll put one back. Also for brows, I have my ColourPop Clear Brow Gel as well as my ABH Soft Brown Brow Dip. Is that what this is called? The Dip Brow? Dip Brow. Um, so I'm going to leave both of these in because they're both staples in my brow routine. I'm going to put back my ABH Brow Freeze. I was playing around with this and seeing if I liked it. And I feel like I just have not mastered brow wax or brow gel. So until I figure that out, I don't see any reason to keep that on top of my drawers. I'll just put that back. We have a few single eyeshadows. So this is ColourPop Super Shock in the shade Tassel. This one is one of my staple Super Shock shades. So leaving that in. The shade DGAF is in my current pan, those eyeshadows rotation, so that one will stay. And this one is Ritz. I'm gonna go ahead and put Ritz back because I'm not really using it right now. I have Lash Glue, just the duo. This is like the vitamin C one, this can stay. And then I have a few eye primers. I'm going to leave, let me think. I'm gonna leave my NYX Glitter Primer. I think I'm going to put both of these back because I did just receive another eye primer in PR that I need to try out. So I'm gonna put both of these back and then we'll trade that out for a different one. I just got these in the mail the other day. These are from About Face, which is Halsey's brand. I got two of the matte fluid eye paints and one of the fractal fluid eye paints. So for matte colors, I got black, the shade Art of Darkness, and I got this lime green Vertigo Flowers. And for the glitter, I also got re, is that refract? Sorry, I'm trying to read through my camera and I can't refract. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox these. And these I'm all, all three of these I'm gonna put in my current rotation just to try them out because they are brand new. And I love to put my new products in my everyday stuff just so I have an excuse to play with them and I can quickly find them. I'm super excited about the matte black. And this green one I've swatched a few times in Ulta and I am very intrigued by this one as well. So I think those will be fun. I'm going to try all three of those. We have some face products. So this is my Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. This is broken somehow. I haven't figured out how, but it keeps leaking down the side. So I just leave that up there while I finish it up. Um, and then of these three, I feel like the NARS is the other one I'd gravitate towards most often but I feel like it wouldn't be a bad idea to try and finish off one of the other two because they're older. I think I'm gonna leave the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I wanna try this one out. It used to be a staple, and I feel like I kind of fell off the Charlotte Tilbury train. Um, so I do wanna try this one out again and see maybe why I stopped liking it so much. So I'll leave those two. And then I have this Zoella Beauty Blissful Mistful Body Mist. This is in one of my current project pans, so that will also stay. I'm not really gonna touch on lip products because pretty much every single one of these is either an everyday shade that I normally go to, or they're in projects like this lip balm, this red lipstick back here. So if you're curious about any of these shades, it's probably the same as most of the times I do my Shop My Stashes, so I'm just not even gonna touch on those today. For the products rolling into my current rotation in my Shop My Stash, I have this ABH Cream Bronzer in the shade Amber. I have really been having my eye on this one. I've really been thinking about pulling this one out again. So I think fall would be the perfect time to do that. 
I also pulled out two eye products. So this is the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I just received this one in PR and this is one that I really wanna try. I think I'm going to leave this one out. And then I also have the Fluff Proof Mascara. This is the yellow shade. I don't think it tells me the name. It's, it's the yellow one though. So I have this mascara as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one out because I feel like it'd be fun to do a pop of yellow for fall. So those two are rolling in. The other bronzer product I have is my One Size Beauty Bronzer Contour Trio. This is the Made for Shade Light Trio. I think this is a fabulous palette. It's been a hot second since I've pulled it out, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out. I also pulled out this little perfume. This is the Marc Jacobs Daisy Dream. Look how little I have left in this. My life goal is to finish this. I really wanna finish a fragrance this year, so I pulled this one out to hopefully finish that. And then I have one blush palette. This is the Melt Amori Mary Post's blush palette. One of my favorite blush palettes in general, but for this time of year especially, I feel like these shades are just absolutely perfect. So pull that one out. And for palettes, I only pulled two palettes out because we know I'm probably going to be gravitating more palettes into my rotation throughout the month. But we have the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice, which is always a good one to pull out for this time of year. I have several pans in this palette, plus a finished shade. And it's just a really good one to have. It's just a really good everyday go-to palette. And then the other palette I pulled out is my Odinzai Salmon 2 palette, specifically for the warm row at the bottom. I just have been thinking about this palette a lot recently, and I really want to create some pretty fall looks with these warm tones at the bottom. That is it for my fall shop my stash for 2023. We have definitely consolidated these drawers. They are looking a lot more roomy. I am very happy with the selections we made. I'm excited to see how much use out of these products I can get. As always, this one just houses clips and sponges, but this is looking a lot more manageable and I'm glad we could get this cleared off. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up before you go and subscribe so you never miss out on any of my Shop My Stash or panning content. And with that, I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye friends. <laughs>